Did you know that the command line is so powerful that you can actually create .NET Core projects within it? Learn more on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, coming from you, coming to you from my very professional childhood bedroom studio. And today I am joined by Syed Hashimi, who is a senior PM on the ASP.NET team. Welcome, Syed. Hello, how's it going? Definitely uh, happy to be here. Been on uh, Visual Studio Toolbox a bunch of times in the past and always love coming out here to uh, to show kind of the, the latest and greatest. So thanks very much for having me. Yeah, welcome back. So today we're gonna be talking about creating .NET Core projects in the command line, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, what we're planning on doing is, you know, basically kind of creating a series of videos and uh, uh, and the the range of topics will be, you know, we'll first start out with uh, how do you create projects using .NET new, and then we'll move on to um, using community created templates from both .NET new and Visual Studio. And then uh, we'll move on to to then start showing how to actually create templates and how to customize those for Visual Studio. So uh, this is really just kind of the the first video in that video series, and you know just kind of like what you mentioned in this video, we'll be focusing on you know using .NET New and and uh, and understanding kind of the uh, the basics uh, before we get started on creating our own templates here. Yeah, exciting. So Very why exciting. the command line? What's the perk or why should I make a .NET Core project within the command line? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that's a great question. So, um, you know, if we, uh, <clears throat> if we were to rewind the clock, you know, like, you know, five, six years back, right. So before there was .NET Core, uh, there was .NET Framework and, you know, in that world, in that world, everybody was creating and, and building and developing with inside Visual Studio itself. Right. And, and I mean, Visual Studio on Windows. Uh, but now with .NET Core, we live in kind of a different world, right? So if you're creating a template, uh, if you're creating a project template, and if you want to have the the broad reach, you need to surface that in a way that can meet users where they're at, right? So uh, today, users that will develop with Visual Studio 2019, or maybe with Visual Studio Code, or Visual Studio for Mac, and and uh, there's also third-party editors out there like JetBrains Writer and um, you can also customize any editors like Sublime and, and Notepad++ to also do development with .NET Core. So um, the way that we've kind of uh, architected this is uh, we have we have what's called the the template engine, and you can think about that as being like you know the the kind of foundation that everything would sit on. So we've got the template engine, and then sitting directly on top of that would be .NET new command line, and also Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac. So uh, the idea is, you know, we should we, we can create templates using the template engine, and then we can surface that uh, in all the relevant locations, right? So if you create a template with template engine, you can get that to appear in the .NET new command line. It can also show up in Visual Studio 2019, uh, Visual Studio for Mac, and and also I believe Writer has got that extensibility as well, to where it will show these kind of community created templates. So. Uh, to answer the question is really, you know, you just need to meet the users where they're at. And, you know, the people developing .NET Core applications, they're not only in Visual Studio anymore. They're they're in various different places. And and then uh, also, you know, I think one kind of um, another benefit is creating a template with the template engine is very kind of easy in comparison to the alternative technologies that are available out there. So that's that's why I would say that, yeah. So you get the the broadest reach. Uh, and then it's also easier to create and maintain your templates if you author them with the template engine. Great. Yeah, I personally enjoy using the command line. And I always forget that you can actually create a project in the command line to begin with. So can you show us how it works? That's right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go check out the uh, the terminal here. So let me get my terminal app opened up here. And uh, i got a helicopter flying in the background. I apologize <laughs> about that. Um, so first, I want to let's go ahead and take let's just explore .NET New, right? And um, .NET New is delivered with the uh, with the .NET SDK. So let's just go ahead and execute .NET New and and see what we get out of this. So if you run .NET New, uh, it'll go ahead and show you the various different templates that are available to be used. Um, so here we can see I've got a mix of different things. You know, I've got the 
Um, most of these are kind of built-in templates, but we can also see I've got some community mm -hmm. and custom templates installed here as well. Um, so if I was to use this, uh, uh, sorry, at the bottom, there's also some examples here. So let's take a look at that. So if I were to do <clears throat> .NET new, and then we would give it the name for the template that we want to create here. And that's what we see here in short name. So there's various different options here. Let's go ahead and explore the, the MVC option here. So if I was to do on that new MVC, um, I could also get help that's specifically help that's specific for this particular template here. So you can do .NET new uh, template name dash H to get the template specific help. Uh, and you can see we've got a bunch of different kind of parameters here as well. So the help will, We'll basically kind of spit out the different parameters that you've got here, and uh, and then we can kind of go from there. And there's also some uh, some common parameters here. Uh, where are we at? So those are here. So some of these that we'll be taking a look at is output, uh, and then install we'll be looking at in the next video. And there's also a name value here. So we'll we'll be using name and output here during this video. So this let's go ahead and create a let's go ahead and create a uh, directory here. I'll say demo one. Let's go ahead and go into that. So if I would just wanted to create an MVC project, I can just do .NET new MVC, and then that'll go ahead and create a project right in this particular folder here. Uh, yeah, so it, it creates the project, and then it will call uh, NuGet to restore them. Let's take a look at the, the contents here. So we can see I created an MVC project and it's named demo1.csproj. It got this name from the name of the folder here. So if you don't specify, <clears throat> if you don't specify a name, uh, then the folder name will be used by default. So that's that's kind of the idea here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's also take a look at this demo project real quick. Or actually, sorry about that. Let's take a look at the the program.cs. One thing that I want to point out to you. Hello. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the project name was demo one. So we can see that when I created this project, the namespace was customized uh, for that project name. So now it's created demo one here. Nice. And uh, yeah, so we'll talk a lot more about, you know, how these replacements work and all that sort of stuff in our kind of additional uh, videos here. <clears throat> yeah, so you that's wanna... exactly what I'd expect if I were creating a template via Visual Studio. Yeah, right. that's yeah. right. That's right. <clears throat> and the <clears throat> the mechanism that's used here uh, is the same with .NET New as well as with Visual Studio. There's uh, another way that I could do that as well. Let me pick a different template here. So we'll say Web App. That's a, that's the name of another template that we have. Instead of uh, just going into the directory itself, you can specify the directory that it should be created at, and then that will also be the name of the project. So I can say .NET new web app, uh, my cool web. Go ahead and create that. So now that will create it uh, into a folder that's called my cool web. Mm -hmm. And then if I was to go and look at the, uh, let's just take a look at the uh, the startup.cs for this one, I guess. We'll see that the the namespace for this one has also been kind of set to my cool web, right? And and now we've got a project that builds and runs, right? So I can verify that by doing .NET build. Uh, and then we could also <clears throat> uh, run this project with .NET Run, or we can go ahead and load this up into uh, Visual Studio or, or whatever editor or IDE uh, that users prefer here. So that was one kind of uh, way of doing it. So we also mentioned that we would show the um, we would show the the name option there. So let me go into this new folder demo two. Uh, if I say .NET new a web API. Uh, and then if I give it a name, I can say my web API. Now that should create it in this folder, uh, but with the name my web API or in the folder called my web API, and then the name will be my web API. And uh, if I was to inspect uh, the program or the startup or the weather forecast, we would see that that namespace has been uh, declared uh, appropriately as well. Let's take, a, let's take another look through the through the help real quick and see if there's any additional options here uh, that we haven't talked about. So one was uh, .NET new list. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Uh, .NET new dash L. So for .NET new dash L, 
this uh, will just list out all the templates that are uh, that are that have been installed here. And you know, like I mentioned, I do have some kind of custom templates installed here. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you see something different, then that means that you know I've just kind of installed something additional that you might not have on your box. Yeah, I don't recall seeing Saya tool <laughs> yeah. on mine. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's right. That's right. That's right. Let me let me kind of explain this uh, this output here. So here we've got the name of the template. This is just kind of a user friendly name. Uh, here is the short name. So that was the name that I was using before, right? We saw MVC Web App and Web API, and and those are here. MVC Web App and Web API is right there. <clears throat> here we can also see the the language option. So let's say if I was an F Sharp or VB developer, I can take a look at this language column. Uh, to to tell me, you know, what templates are available for that particular language as well, and uh, and then the tags are um, they're just kind of categories, right? So if I was interested in a console app, I could do console. So let's do this. .NET new dash l dash h. So what help is available for for list here? And uh, we can see that I can filter by language, and uh, I and we can also filter by type here. So .NET new uh, dash L dash Lang F sharp. This should display only the F sharp templates and then, you know, similarly for VB, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can also do, um, I think we can also do something similar for the, for the tags, I believe, or the, the type here, basically. So if I was to say dash type console, Oh, sorry. Okay, so that one looks like it didn't. Uh, oh, oh, sorry about that. My bad. This is different. This is different. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention here was, you know, in the list of templates that were kind of output here, uh, there's a variety of different things. You know, the vast majority of these are project templates, uh, but we do have a few item templates here, like Git Ignore, Global JSON, so on and so forth. So that's where the that's where the type filter comes in. So if I was to t to list the project. I can do .NET new dash L dash dash type project. And this will just show me all the project templates. Uh, if I wanted to see only the item templates, I would replace the type with item there. You go back and see how can we filter on the, the tag. I'm not sure if that's, that may not actually be possible here to actually filter on the tags here. But, um, but in Visual Studio, these tags will appear and you can actually filter uh, in Visual Studio there. That is pretty sweet. I yeah. had no idea you could get all the same functionality that you normally would if you were to open Visual Studio for the first time, just in the command line. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then, uh, you know, one thing that I kind of forgot to mention here was, you know, everything that I showed here was was with built-in templates. Um, but you would get the same exact functionality with, uh, with custom templates as well. Um, so if I were to do .NET new Syed Web dash H, I would get the the template specific help for that custom template that I've created here. So so you get the exact same experience whether it's a a built-in template created by Microsoft or if it's a template that you created yourself um, or if a third-party company created it. You know you get the same exact experience here. It's not like we're special casing uh, the Microsoft templates here. You know we got the same exact experience all across the board. That's really cool. It makes you feel more official with the templates that you create. Yeah, definitely. And that you know that was that was some feedback that we have received. You know, a lot over the course of the last uh, several years was you know people the template authors they want their templates to appear in a in a first class way. Mm -hmm. um, so when we when we created .NET new, we made sure to uh, to kind of you know fulfill that promise. And and we're also trying to do the same thing in Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac as well. That is exciting stuff. Yeah. So I think that's that's really about it here. You know, we we kind of talked about how can we use .NET new and how can we use the help system to kind of explore, you know, how to learn more about the command and and also some kind of basics here. So I think that's really the that's really it for this video and then the the next uh, videos that follow will will start uh, seeing how can we install community templates and then use those in .NET new as well as uh, Visual Studio. That is some good stuff. I can't wait. And Great. just to close out, you mentioned that you need the .NET SDK for the command line functionality. So where can users go to make sure they have that installed? Oh yeah, right. So so they can go to uh, usually I just go to to GitHub actually to get that. 
Uh, but you know, I think the easiest way is to just do .NET Core download, and uh, that'll take that'll take them to the right place here. So just .NET .Microsoft .com, uh, to get the the latest download of uh, .NET Core. All right, mm -hmm. can't wait. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. Yeah, and everything that I'm showing here applies to both .NET Core 3.1 as well as .NET Core 5. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. That is very exciting. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, thank you. And tune in next time when we talk more about the awesomeness you can do with .NET templates and projects. So till then, happy coding.